What what right now do you see as the biggest limitations of Fedora that you would like to see addressed? Um, I'll put you on the spot here. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to... Um, I think we have a hard time of uh, finding how to put people who show up interested in doing something into the right places. Mm -hmm. uh, so we often have people like, hi, I am especially actually, honestly, with with discourse there and the, the matrix for our chat, we have people showing up who are interested mm -hmm. and there's just not enough people who are prepared to absorb of someone new coming on board and right. you know that onboarding someone can be a lot of work uh and so one of the things um again in in, in the strategy we're, we're focusing on is a mentorship and having that and and onboarding is kind of a key part of that so when somebody shows up and is interested have not just a here's a um Here's a list of tickets you could get to, mm -hmm. um, which which works okay for some people, but uh, Fedora is so big that it's so overwhelming, and we've got so much history and so on that like that approach, uh, it, it it filters people out. It you only get people who have a certain mindset in or, and are able to dig through that, which mm -hmm. uh, amazing. But there's a lot of people that we could really you know be valuable members of the project, have a lot to contribute, get a lot back themselves, who we don't know kind of how to get that hook mm -hmm. um and we have a really there's a join sig that basically kind of does a hand-holding approach for people but it, that I, I think we need to scale that up and also that's very much a here's the intro level and there's not quite the ongoing like you know support that people right. might need to get involved so i think that's really that's really a thing that i think we could do better as a project and if we can do that then we can do everything else better. This is why, you know, of, of the strategy, the uh, guiding principle of what we're trying to do in five years is double the number of contributors who are active. Because um, I think that's a, that's a metric that is, um, it shows the health of the project. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I don't know where technology is going to be in five years. It's sure. going to be somewhere that neither of us have predicted. Um, and so having people who are there and involved, like, that I know is going to be valuable, no matter if you know now all of our code is written by AI and um, I don't know. Uh, Someone rewrote just... the Linux kernel in Rust. Yeah, yeah, you know they use Chat GPT to yeah, re exactly. rewrite it in Rust. Obviously, right? They wouldn't do it themselves. What is this? <laughs> you know, 2022. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But having more people involved in whatever capacity, and you know that is, you know, it's not just coding; it's mm -hmm. documentation, um, but also, you know, talking to people, um, helping run meetings, doing design, answering questions, you know, welcoming people into the project, um, coming to Fedora Social Hour and just chatting about things. All of that stuff is really actually important project contributions. Um, so, more of all that. You touched on something very important there: documentation. I think a lot of people, when they think of like a software project or a distro project, that you have to be a developer to get involved in some way. But there is a lot more, like, you know, if you have, um, I don't know, maybe uh, you're bilingual, you have some ability to do translation, you have, like, there's, there's more than just that. Like, what are ways that... Obviously, those are two yeah. main ways. Like, what are other ways people can get involved yeah. with the project? So I think actually, translation. I want to highlight that a little bit because I think that's something really interesting and special about mm -hmm. um, open source projects. Also, interestingly, you know what AI is bringing to all of this. Mm -hmm. But um, a commercial project is going to be limited in what languages they care about, right. and there are thousands of languages in the world, and some of them are spoken by only a few people in a mm -hmm. small community. Um, but like that small community can have, you know, Fedora Linux mm -hmm. and all this stuff translate, translated for their language. You can have it local to you. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's really powerful and important. It doesn't matter if like that translation is commercially viable or mandated by law somewhere or whatever, like mm -hmm. you can have that. So it's part of this, like this belongs to you OS. So I think that's, that's a really important thing that I definitely would like to call out. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah, there are there are a lot of other ways. We have a great design team in Fedora. Mm -hmm. The Fedora the desktop wallpapers every time are you know done with the community process. And I think we've got great fun wallpapers um, that um, 
I really cool. love. Um, and that's the, paper. yeah, so that's, 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 that's done, you know, in the open. Um, and our design team is, is really great. Um, but one of the easiest things to do, well, wait, wait let me, let me get another one. QA or mm -hmm. quality, um, quality <laughs> work. I'm not gonna say quality assurance, like, um, just 100% the, certain it's quality that, <laughs> yeah, dur during during the releases, you know, when, as we go through, it's like going through, just going through and the te list of tests and checking off checks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes that's gonna be very satisfying uh, to like, okay, look at look at all this. I'm getting towards 100% completion on our matrix. Um, that that's uh, one thing. But also, like as new package updates come out, like those are you know constantly coming, and you know there are regressions. Like test them, find the regressions, comment, and mm -hmm. or uh, that that helps. Um, but then the thing I was going to say, um, ask.fedoraproject.org, which is mm -hmm. now a subsession of the discussion forum, like go there, look at people's questions, provide what you know. Um, you don't need to be an expert to know something. Um, and even if you don't know the answer, mm -hmm. you can look at people's questions and be like, okay, I know that they're going to, they, they didn't say what graphics card they're using mm -hmm. and they're talking about a graphics problem. Right. So you can say something like, hey, so-and-so, welcome. Hey, could you provide these details so we can provide a better answer? Like just being friendly like that, mm -hmm. like that, like, and, and then, you know, you'll help build some expertise. Mm -hmm. um, at the ISP that I helped start, like, you know, I did telephone tech, frontline tech support, and I did that also at my university job, actually helping direct people and there is no way to learn more faster than trying to help people with their problems. Like it's so good. Yeah. Uh, so that's not just like a way you can help, like you will learn a lot doing that. So I really recommend that as a way to get involved as well. Mm. I think it's a good answer. 